Saving rate is the number one factor to determine how long would you take to achieve financial independence. In this video, I'm going to show you the reason behind it and the fact that families with different income levels can achieve it with exactly the same amount of years. Hi, my name is Irene. Hit the like button if you want financial freedom, where you would stop worrying about your work, rent, mortgages and bills. I mean, who doesn't? If you look at a person's financial positions in a lifespan, from being financial dependent to debt free, all the way up to financial abundance, when can you tell you're financially independent? Financial independence is the status of having enough income to pay the living expenses without having to be employed or depend on others. So the income here is definitely passive income. It could be from your income return, things like dividend or distributions, or the price return, the capital gain from your investments. So how do I know how much will be enough for me to achieve FIRE? 4% safe withdrawal rate seems to be the golden formula to determine the size of your portfolio that can generate enough total return to cover your annual expenses. So to back calculate, you need the size of your pot to be 25 times of your annual expenses. But why 4%? This 4% metric was created in the 1990s by a financial advisor, William Bengen, who assumes the return of an investment is 7% minus the 3% inflation. Of course, the 7% is based on the historical return of stock market and the past performance is never a guarantee of the future performance. Although the annualized return of S&P 500 is about 10% gross return since inception. Of course, you can plug this withdrawal rate to a smaller number just to be conservative, which will give you a bigger size of the pot that you need to build. For example, based on ABS, the average weekly household spending on goods and services is 1,425. That gives us around 75,000 per year. So to follow the 4% rule for an average Aussie family, you will need 1.9 million invested to follow the 3% rule, for example, the family would need 2.5 million invested. In the investing world, we all know that we need to take advantage of the compound interest. And there are three elements in this formula, the present value of your portfolio or your principal, the rate of return of your investment and time or the frequency of your rate of return compounds. And I talk about this formula in details in another video that time has the biggest impact to determine the future value of your portfolio. But people who are in the FIRE community want to get out of the rat race as soon as possible. Can I go FIRE by 80? It just doesn't make sense, right? So we got limited time here, but there always a but. The focus factor here shouldn't be the rate of return of your investment, but the saving rate. Let me explain. When I firstly heard of FIRE movement, I was a little bit doubtful with the concept of achieving fire with limited time. Because if you think about it, when can you start making money? 22 as a fresh graduate. And what is the average fire age? 45, 50. So you are taken away with the biggest weapon, time. And what else can you focus? The return of the investment. And of course you can do aggressive dollar cost averaging as much as you can. But I never link the how much percentage of the expenses can be covered by the return of your investment. So when I came across with this calculator called When Can You Retire by Mr. Money Mustache, this formula only focuses on one single factor, that is the saving rate, is the money that you invested divided by the bring home income. This formula is so simple, it blew my mind. By the way, if you never heard of Mr. Money Mustache, he's a Canadian born blogger who retired at age 30 as a software engineer in 2005. Mr. Money Mustache has a big influence to the FIRE community. Here is his logic and how he did it. By the time you are financially independent, you want your pot to cook enough food, which is the total return to cover your expenses. Remember, we don't want to touch the principal, so our net worth never shrinks. So we can just focus on the percentage, the total return of the investment covers the expenses. By the time your ROI exceeds the expenses, you did it, you made it. Congratulations. Let's play around with this calculator and the current annual income is the money that you bring home and the current annual savings is the amount of money that goes directly into investment to let the money work for you. So it shouldn't count the cash in the low interest rate saving account, for example. And this calculator is based on net return of investment ROI 5%, withdrawal rate 4%. So let's plug the number of annual bring home income here as 
a hundred thousand for example and you have thirty thousand invested every year which gives you the saving rate of thirty percent it will take 28 years to find in the beginning of the video that I mentioned, families with different income levels can achieve FIRE with exactly the same amount of years. While well, there's an assumption here, that is you haven't built up your portfolio yet. Because if your starting points are different, that's gonna tilt the number of years a little bit. Say another family, the annual bring home income is 50,000 and you manage to put 30%, which is 15,000 into investment, it will take exactly the same 28 years as well. And for this family, as an example, if we increase our saving rate by 10%, the time to file reduced by 23% from 28 years to 21.6 years. If we keep the same saving rate, 30%, to make sure that we take the same time, 21.6 years, we need to increase 3.8% more on the ROI every year, which means that you need to have a net return of 8.8% plus the 3% inflation, which gives you the gross return 11.8%. To me, that is a little bit too optimistic. By the way, the saving rates of different countries on this page is based on year 2008, which is a little out of date. And let me give you the average number based on the year 2019 here. And then you can see where you're at comparing your country's average saving rate. And how to increase saving rate? A goal without a plan is only a wish. So without knowing your yearly expenses, how can you draft a plan of attack? When was the last time you review your yearly expenses? Things like insurance, your house insurance, your car insurance, your private health insurance, your life and TPD, your everyday banking, your mortgage package, your super utility, all of these can save you heaps if you dedicate a little bit of time to do some research and shop around, let alone the forgotten direct debit subscriptions. Earlier this year after my CFA exam, I did a big housekeeping of the providers and save us a couple of thousand on a yearly basis. Everybody knows that your bring home income minus your expenses equals your savings and you put portion of your savings into your investments. So to increase your saving rate, you can increase your income level or cut your expenses. Well, to increase your income level, you can work harder, take extra hours or take a more challenging role. But a more challenging role normally means a more stressful role, which possibly leads you to spend more. Or you can get a pay rise, but during the pandemic, or post pandemic, I think it will be a little bit challenging. On the other hand, cutting the expenses is relatively easier and it can almost bring you instant result. That's why a lot of people in the FI community, they advocate to go frugal, which I don't fully agree and I don't want to go down the path either. And recently I've been reading Marie Kondo's books. This is the second one that I'm reading, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Well, I think a couple of takeaway points that can be applied to investing even to life. She believes that tidying up a house is not about getting rid of stuff, it's about keeping the items that you really like. In her words, is keeping the items that really spark joy. So if you think of your home, if you're surrounded by the things that you really enjoy, you are living your dream life, isn't it? You're not only tidying up your house, you're tidying up your life, you're reflecting on yourself. So by examining your expenses, you may detect a couple of unhealthy spending habits or maybe even that can help you to define who you are, what your life goals are. And do you buy things because your friends are buying that you actually don't need? Do you buy new clothes, new cars to impress people around you who probably don't care? Do you buy expensive clothes to make people think that you are rich? Why would you care how other people think of you? What makes you happy? We can't blame ourselves, we're all human beings. Shopping can produce a dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter that can bring us instant pleasure and satisfaction. But sadly, this feeling doesn't last long. And also shopping can bring us instant gratification. And who likes to seek instant gratification? Children. You know what I'm talking about if you have one. But the ability to hold the impulse now for a greater reward later is an essential skill that we need to help ourselves and our kids to unwire their brain to make smarter decisions. Same with investing. Money has time value. The earlier that you invest and let the money work for you, the bigger the value of your investment 
will be in the long run. My whole point is cut the noises and only spend on the essential things and the things that you truly enjoy. Financial independence retire early is the goal for the people in the FIRE community and the saving rate is the number one factor to help you achieve it faster. However, be careful not to get burned because the FIRE concept or any concept shouldn't be overpowering yourself and you don't want to be in another race to get out of the right race. Instead, try to be kind to yourself, eat healthy, be mindful and try to enjoy the process. For my husband and I, we like the concept of the financial independence, but we both like to work as well. So by the time we reach our number, we probably will keep working, not for anybody else, but for ourselves. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And I hope my video added some value to you because that's always my goal. My name's Irene. I'll see you next week. Bye.